First, I want to talk about debugging. And for this example, I want to create a small recording, which is basically going to record a couple of steps that I do here in the FB50 transaction. So let me just um, set up the recording. Okay. So I'm just going to call it sb50.vbs, so not wbs. Okay, set it to record. Um, let me find it, start the transaction again. So FB50, we already have the company code. So we are going to pick a date and uh, I don't know, put in some reference and uh, I don't know, I start putting into some details. Not that it really matters because I'm not going to complete this one. So fine. And also I'm going to click on this one. I want to see if I can somehow get the status of the of the invoice. So this traffic light. And normally I won't be able to do anything with it because I can't copy this uh, like icon away from Excel, sorry, from SAP. So I you know, with normal screen recording, I won't be able to capture this information. So we are going to see how debugging is going to help us to get this data out of SAP. So now it is called, um, now it's red. So, okay, let me stop the recording because that's going to be enough for now. And um, that's the script which got created. So let me just go and edit. And I'm going to copy this piece out, which is all the, um, the recording. And I already have a file which is sort of like an empty dummy file and this is called the FB50 test. If you are looking for this in the download section. And here in the script part where I have most of the code execution, I just going to paste this in. Here. I don't need this piece of code now, so I'm just going to delete. And just like before, I need to copy the session variable and update it. Okay, so let me just do that quickly. Maybe I can use like a replacer or something. But uh, just bear with me one second. Okay, so that's the, that's the piece of code which does all these uh, steps in FB50. And the first thing that we can see now, even if you look at this code, is, you know, it does the, uh, launches the transaction, and then it starts entering all the different details and, and the posting line item details, uh, cost center, profit center, and all that stuff. And at the end, I do have something which says, you know, something set focus, and that was, basically this control here which is the traffic light and we couldn't really do anything with it but at least we can click on that item and you know set it to focus you can see these uh, red brackets and that action was actually recorded in the script so at least we know that this screen control the traffic light is called you know window 0 slash user slash txt rf 5 a ampo so we know that you know, we can do something with it. So hopefully we can see how we can get data out of it. So before we get there, let's just use this opportunity to look at the debugging. In Visual Basic Editor, you can place a breakpoint into any line of the code which does actual um, execution. So for example, I can place a breakpoint here by clicking here in, the, uh, in this gray area, and you can place breakpoint any number, um, unlimited number of breakpoints, well, as many as you want. You can't place breakpoint for lines where there is only like, for example, declaration. So I can't put a breakpoint here, but that's fine. What I want to use this debugging is I want to see, you know, what is really happening in SAP. Because if you run into issues, most likely what is going to happen is that you recorded a script and in a particular scenario, SAP behaves in a different way because there is an additional pop-up or um, a screen element, like for example, a button is disabled, so you can't actually click on it. But with the script recording, SAP is trying to execute the exact same steps. So 
if you can't press a button because there is a pop-up on the screen or you can't press a button because there is a uh, the button is disabled it is really hard to see why your code is failing because in most cases everything is happening so fast in SAP so you can't you know, physically see it and you can't really know what has gone wrong and that issue is more pronounced in my example of codes because what I usually do is before the script execution starts I put this statement here in you know in pretty much all my Visual Basic codes which says on error go to my error which tells Visual Basic that if any issue or if any error happens in the piece of code which is you know below this line which is it technically in here it's, it's all the script the GUI script lines then it stops the execution of the script and then jumps into this label which says my error and then it just displays an error message saying that you know something happened why we retrieved the data or you know something happened in SAP so you can't actually tell where it has failed I mean if you look at the GUI screen it will stop at the point where the code has failed so maybe you can you know you can guess what what has gone wrong but it's it doesn't always work that way and if I click on start now then what we see is nothing really happened in SAP yet and our code execution has stopped at this point where we placed our breakpoint you can see that the uh, the yellow arrow shows where the code execution is at the moment if you click on uh, uh, an empty space of the toolbar you can enable the debug window so now we can use this step over button just to debug through every single line of our code so the first code is maximized which well the screen is already maximized so it's not making any impact and next one is we are entering the slash nfv50 and then now we are pressing enter so it launches the transaction and you know with this you know debugging through the code now you can really understand what your code is doing so now we are you know putting this key in okay we brought up the uh, the date picker and we are uh, selecting the date and putting the reference in and starting maintaining all the different values in the posting items okay and at the end we put something else in I pressed enter which is that's the send key and now we are at the code when we are clicking on this traffic light icon and before I execute that I want to show something else which is the uh, the watch window which again comes really really handy when you are trying to debug something so now as you can see we are using the, the session object to find a component on the screen and we are calling one of its method which is called a set focus so if I only select the object session and the find by ID and I right click and I put add watch and I OK now what I can see is that um, this object has been put into my watch window and now it has a type of SAP text field target which yeah that's fine something we don't really care what we really care about is just to see you know what is stored in this object and then so just to understand if this is something that we can use in our code so for example if I open this up then we can see all of its properties uh, of this text box or this text control and most of it I think doesn't make sense or is not something that we can really use but for example the one thing which stands out in this particular case is the icon name so it looks like s underscore t underscore r and then probably the r stands for uh, red if we have you know looked at this uh, piece of icon previously in the code maybe it would have been amber you know it starts as amber and um, yeah it has a name which yeah that wouldn't change so there is not much on this one but at least we should be able to extract the icon name and if the icon name is uh, s underscore tl underscore r then we know it's a red icon so let me just go up execute this code if I just press play then it, it will execute all the way to the end and if I go back to my uh, scripting again and I press start and if I start the debugging right from the beginning now we are putting FV50 here again and we are pressing enter okay so we are here and let me pick the date okay now if you look at this one now it says amber if I go back to my debugger if I open this up 
I go back to the uh, name. Well, you can see it's yellow. So S underscore T underscore, uh, sorry, S underscore TL underscore Y. So that's probably the icon name for the yellow. And if we would look at the green, that would probably like G at the end. So now you know how you can use the debugger or uh, well, specifically the watch window to understand what your objects are doing and how to use some of the the properties that you have in an object and you can easily modify this code by just doing something like here so for example cells 1010 which is like i don't know row 10 and column whatever would be like n or something dot value which should equal to okay I need this object so that's the same instruction or the same expression that I put into the watch window and I need the icon name property such icon name good okay let's debug this let's debug through this code I'm just pressing this step over button Okay, we press the end key and then we have gone through this line as well. And if I open up the Excel and I need to scroll a little bit further. Now you can see that it's, uh, that's the cell 1010. So column 10, which is J and row 10, which is 10. And, and as you can see, we have extracted the icon name. So we put it into one of our cell in the Excel document and you, we can do some, uh, something with this information, which we have now in Excel. Whilst we are in the debugger, I want to show you something else. The screen, every GUI screen is constructed in a hierarchy pattern, which means that you have a main window and in that main window you have uh, probably this, which uh, shows, which, which contains this text that enter GL account, company code 1029. And then probably it also has a toolbar and then it has these control, which has two tabs and this other one and this other one and then the buttons below that. And they are in some sort of hierarchy. So every control would have a parent control all the way up to the main window. And then other controls, for example, this tab would probably have childs, which are the, the document date, the posting date, the reference date. And you can easily navigate through this hierarchy. If you open up any of these objects in the debugger, just like I have done this uh, with this traffic light, and you scroll down, you can probably find a parent. And the parent object is going to give you the, um, the GUI object, which is behind uh, this traffic light in this case. So probably there is like a panel or a screen element, something like this. So in our case, uh, we can go back and then the parent says SAP screen target. Yeah, okay, it doesn't really say much. And if I open up the children, I can see that it has quite a few children's. And again, if you look at the screen, so the, the parent of this one is probably this panel and that probably has a couple of children because it has this text which says total um, debit and then this entry field and the currency and then total credit and this field and the currency. And we can actually see this here. So we have, uh, okay, we have a tablet pane and a box and a label. So if you open up the label, okay, let's see what is. Oh, and the display text, uh, that display text says total DR. And that's what we have here. Okay, that's nice. Let's look at the other one. And then we have a text field target. And then what does it say? 200. So which is exactly here. So as I said, you can e even use the, uh, the parent and the children relationship to explore your entire screen and then maybe get to pieces of the, uh, the screen that you normally won't be able to get by GUI scripting. I mean, I wanted to give you, um, pick this as an example, like the, um, the company code name or the company code ID, but they are actually clickable objects. But I'm pretty sure that there are, you know, cases where you want to access something that you normally can't click on the screen. But again, just, you know, record clicking on almost anywhere in the screen or close to the control that you are interested in. And you can just use the debugging and you can use the parent, parent and the ch children property and then just basically explore the screen and then when you open up the object 
you can see what the object has, what is the information that you have on the object, what is it that you can extract, which will be useful for, you know, your